Salt Lake City, Utah is facing a climate crisis as its namesake body of water disappears. So far, the Great Salt Lake has shrunk to a third of its original size. And as it dries up, scientists say heavy metals, including arsenic, are exposed, which can then become airborne. Bonnie Baxter is one of those scientists. She's a professor of biology at Salt Lake City's Westminster College. Bonnie, thank you so much for being with us. Um, you know, we talk about climate change all the time and its impact on places like Salt Lake, but it's not just that. There's really been a population explosion in the Salt Lake area. Are these the two driving forces that's causing the lake to shrink? I think, I think the main driving force right now um, is, up until this point, is water diversions for, as you point to, development, but also for agriculture. And mm. uh, that's just happened over the last century. And we've not set ourselves up for success. So now we're, um, you know, experiencing warmer temperatures and less snowpack, for example, where we get our water from in this watershed. And um, we're, we're not ready for that. The lake is no longer rebounding with uh, the precipitation that it used to. So um, it, it's sort of water diversion meets climate change. Right. You know, we mentioned the word arsenic. You hear that, that's very scary. How would this element and other heavy metals impact human health? I mean, negatively. Yeah, I, I don't really know about like airborne heavy metals. I don't study that, but I can um, imagine that that's terrible along with the particulates that if this becomes a dust bowl, we will be breathing. Uh, there's arsenic, there's selenium, there is methylated mercury in this lake bed. Um, so a uh, history of mining in the West has led to, you know, some heavy metals in a, a large wet sink, which was Great Salt Lake. Um, so I, I think that we do worry about what's going to be in the dust. Well, especially as we said, the, the population there has increased a lot. I mean, this could end up having a really big impact on a bigger population of people than many probably foresaw even moving to Salt Lake City years ago. That's right. Uh, a lot of people know about the climate disaster that was, um, or I should say the pollution disaster that was Owens Lake, one of the worst pollution situations in in the United States was in California when Owens Lake was basically drained to feed water to LA. Um, and this is 10 times the size of Owens Lake. Oh. And and there's a metropolitan center right next door to this lake. It's our neighbor. So um, it, it is concerning that so many people live along the Wasatch Front and would be breathing this dust. What are some of the other impacts if this lake dries up? Well, you know, some of us are worried about the ecosystem. There's 10 million birds that migrate here. It's mm. the most important body of water on the Pacific Flyway. Um, and uh, the, the stromatolites that I study are uh, becoming beached and uh, they're, they're really uh, a little bit, uh, that, that's the bottom of the food chain. So it's, it's, if it dies, then it doesn't feed the brine shrimp, which feed the birds. And uh, we're looking at, you know, an ecosystem collapse. So we're worried about that side of things. We're worried about the dust. We're worried about industry. There's the ski industry that depends on some of the lake effect from this lake that creates this greatest snow on snow, earth. Right. You can cause it. Um, we're worried about the brine shrimp industry, the mineral extraction industry. So there's jobs at stake. There's human health at stake, and there's an ecosystem at stake. You know, I really we have to get going because we have so much other news. But I, I want to end on a positive note. Is there anything that can be done? Are you looking at at solutions? Yeah, I think I think one of the positive things that happened in this last legislative session in Utah um, really gives me hope. There were so many bills passed that support the lake and getting water to the lake. Um, and it was really hopeful, a hopeful situation to see environmental groups working alongside industry, working alongside legislators. And it was very powerful. And I think when everyone's rowing in the same direction, we can save this lake. All right. Well, let's keep the work up. Bonnie Baxter, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, nice to see you, Jamie.